Hello, this is Steve from Alimatics, and this is the video where I show you how to default and reprogram your Bosch Solution 880, Bosch Solution 2000, or Bosch Solution 3000 control panel. We're going to get you started really quick, so if you just moved into a house or a shop or an office and you've got one of those three panels, but you don't have any codes for the system, this is the video that will show you how to get everything defaulted and reprogrammed in about 15 minutes. So we'll show you how to delete all the codes, add your own installer code, add your own master user code, add some other user codes into the system. We'll set up the delay so you've got enough time to get in and out of your house or your shop. We'll show you how to set up stay mode so that you have some sensors on while you're sleeping and have others off while you're sleeping. So your living rooms would be on, sleeping areas would be off. Um, everything that you need to get a basic system up and running quickly. Um, what I won't cover on this video is uh, anything to do with um, monitoring, so no mobile phone alerts, no back to base monitoring, no app. This is just a quick start video to get you up and running quickly from a system that's not working to a system with some basic functionality. Uh, the next in this series of videos will show you how to set up your mobile phone, uh, mobile phone alerts and set up the Bosch app. We'll also go into some other things like um, adding wireless sensors to the system. So this video will not cover wireless sensors either. So if you have wireless sensors on your system, do not default your system because there's some other information that we need to get from your system before we do that. I will cover that in one of the next videos in this series. So uh, this is the zone list that we're going to use as our sample system. So we are going to set this system up um, as if this was the system at your place. Now, obviously it's not going to be the same as what you have, so we will um, you can just customize this to suit yourself. So where I've got a read switch on the front door, if you don't have that, you'll have something that needs to be on a delay, so that will be a delay zone. So let's work through this system. Um, we've got a lot to cover. It'll only take us 15 minutes or so, so let's get started. Okay, here's our Bosch solution panel. That's the panel you should uh, have. If your box doesn't look like that, it's probably not a solution 880 or 2000 or 3000. So let's assume that you've got the right panel. Uh, there are two screws uh, at the top there. I've already taken them out. So pull those out, take the lid off. Once you've got the panel off, uh, we can see we're going to be uh, unplugging the battery, unplugging the power and uh, resetting the panel using the default button. But I'll lie the panel down and uh, reposition the camera now so that you can get a better look. Uh, at what we need to do next. Okay, here we are over on the bench. So let's default the system. So we need to remove power from the system. That's battery power and AC power. You should have a power point next to your alarm panel. If you don't, doesn't matter. You've still got to disconnect the power, but you'll do it from this end, from this um, connector here. So let's disconnect the battery. So remove one lead, doesn't matter which one. I'm going to remove the positive. I'm just going to tie that back there so it doesn't bounce back and short out anything on the board. Now we need to remove power from this um, plug pack. This is 18 volts AC, so not enough voltage to hurt you. Let's just zoom in on that so you can see it a bit clearer. Move that back a little bit. Okay, so um, this wire here is from the plug pack. It says on here 18 volts AC. So let's. I'm going to grab that connected to remove it and I'm going to rock it gently backwards and forwards as I pull on it. It's quite a firm fit. There we go. We've taken the power off the system. If you noticed before, you may not have, there's a little red light that was on here when we had power on, this heartbeat light, that's now disappeared so we know we've got no power on the system. To default the system, we need to press and hold this default button and it's right here at the top of the board. It actually says default above it. So the word default is printed on top of the board here. This is actually a um, Solution 3000 board. The Solution 2000 board looks similar. And over here, I'll bring over an 880 because as I mentioned earlier, this video covers all three systems. The Solution 880, the Solution uh, 2000, and the Solution 3000. I'm trying to position this to show you the, the default button here, not to being too successful, but it's again at the top of the board, it's right Oh, gosh, this is no good, Steve. There we go, that's it there. See that there, the default button? So this is on the Solution 880. So let's get rid of that. Um, so to default the system, no matter what panel it is, I'm gonna press and hold that default button. It makes quite a definite click when you press it. And I'm gonna power it up so I could connect the battery, but for me, I'm going to use the AC because it's a bit easier. So I'm going to plug that connector back on, make sure you put it around the right way. And I'm holding that button, that default button down. You can see that heartbeat light is 
blinking quickly as soon as it slows down. There it goes. Now the uh, system has been defaulted, so I can release that default button. Okay, uh, don't forget to reconnect your battery, and then we'll go over to the code pad and make sure that our installer code has defaulted and our uh, master code has defaulted. Okay, that's how your code pad should look now after we've defaulted the system. There'll be numbers on there you haven't seen before. There'll be stuff flashing. Now we should have access to two special codes. One is the master user code. That should now be 2580, and it, it allows us to just arm and disarm the system as normal, but also allows us to add and delete other user codes. Then we should have access to the installer code now, which should default to 1234. Uh, so the installer code allows us to get in there and do, um, you know, change delays, change zone types, uh, put the phone number in if, if the system still dials your mobile phone. Uh, we need that to set the app up and, you know, all those sort of installer type things. So let's go in there first with the, uh, make sure that we've got the master user code defaulted. So as I said, it's 2580. So if I enter 2580 and press away, we can see the system is armed because the little bloke's leaving the house. Uh, so, so far, so good. I'm gonna disarm the system now with 2580 and stay. Great. Let's see if we can get into installer programming mode with 1234. 1234 and away, we're in installer programming mode. We can we know that we are because we've got the stay and away indicators flashing. Programming is done through the code pad on any of the solution control panels. I'm using the icon code pad in this demonstration because it's probably the one that you've got, it's the most commonly used. So to program a particular setting in the panel, we first need to know its programming location. All the programming locations can be found in the installation manual. So I put a link in the description of this video to the programming manuals for the Solution 2000 and 3000, that's the same book, and also the Solution 880. So there are many, many, many options in the um, control panel to program. We don't need to do all of those options. We're just gonna program the, the few that we need to get a basic system up and running. So as a quick demonstration, I'm going to show you how to, uh, what the installer code or how we would reprogram the installer code. So you can see in the manual here that the installer code has a programming location of 181. In fact, you can see it's got four programming locations and that's because at each programming location, you can only put one piece of information. In this case, you can only put one digit at 181. That's why there are four. The installer code has four digits. So the first digit of the code is stored at 181 and the default values are over here. So when you default at the panel, these default values are what are now programmed into the system. So the um, first digit of the installer code is located at 181 and by default it's a one. Second digit is at 182, third at 183, fourth at 184, so one, two, three, four. So what we're going to do now is reprogram the installer code from one, two, three, four to five, six, seven, eight. So to do that, I've got to go, I've got to jump to location 181. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. I might be making this sound more complicated than what it is. Anyway, enough babble, let's go over to the keypad and we'll do um, a quick demonstration of how we change the installer code. And this applies to every setting, whether it's installer code or zone types or stay mode or anything else in the system. If you can do this, if you can program the installer code now, you can program absolutely any option in the entire panel. To program the installer code, the first thing we need to do is to go into installer programming mode. So we know the installer code is 1234, so let's get into installer programming mode by entering the installer code and pressing away. We're now in installer programming mode. Now we need to jump to the location that we want to program. We want to program location 181, which is the first digit of the installer code. So to jump to a location, I enter its three digit location number and I press the away button. Now I'm at location 181 and the code pad is showing me what's stored at 181 and it's showing me it's stored a one. It's the first digit of the installer code, it's a one. Now I can jump to 182 and that's the second digit of the installer code and it it's, uh, currently contains a two, which is right. Now instead of, I can just jump again to 183 and there's the third digit and I can jump to 184 and there's the fourth digit, which is a four. So we've confirmed that the installer code is one, two, three, four. I'm gonna change it to five, six, seven, eight. So I jump back to 181 and I just type in the new digit that I want. So I want the first digit to be a five. So I press five and I save that by pressing the stay button. Now I can, because these locations are sequential, I don't have to jump to 181 and then 182 manually. I can just press the away button and that will step me through to the next location. So we're looking at location 181 now. I can step to 182 by pressing the away button. 
So um, location two is showing me that there's a two. I wanna change that to a six because I'm changing the code to five, six, seven, eight, remember? So I press six, I save it with the stay button. I step to 183 by pressing stay. I'm gonna change the third digit to a seven. I save it with the stay button. I step through to the next location by pressing away. And there's the fourth digit of the installer code. I'm changing that to an eight. So I enter the new value, save it and step. Now I wanna go back and just check that um, I've uh, changed the code. So I'll jump back to 181 and press away. So I've jumped to 181. First digit is a five. I'm gonna step through again to display them. Second digit is a six. Third digit is a seven. Fourth digit is an eight. Make sense? Okay, now I'm gonna hop out of programming mode now. To exit programming mode, we press uh, the command 960 and away. And we've now exited program mode and the panel's back in normal run mode. Next, we'll turn the auto dialer off. By default, the dialer is turned on when the system has been uh, reset or defaulted. So we'll turn that off even if it's just temporarily um, because this video, again, is not going to cover monitoring or um, mobile phone alerts. So let's get rid of that for now. In the next video, I'll show you how to set up mobile phone alerts. So let's go into installer programming mode using 5678, which is our new installer code. We're in installer programming mode. Now I need to jump to the location where the dialer um, enable function is, and that's 177. So I push 177 and away to jump to it. And you can see that it's set at a nine. To disable the dialer, we're going to change it to a zero. So I enter zero, save it with the stay button, and that turns the dialer off. Let's program our zone types. So the zone type just tells the zone how it's going to behave when it's triggered. So we can make it delayed or we can make it instant. And there's a couple of special types there which we'll look at as well. So of course we need to go into installer programming mode. I'll do that with my new installer code and press away. I'm now in installer program mode. So the zone types are listed on the screen there. So to change the zone type for zone one, I need to jump to location 267. So 267 and away. Okay, it's currently set to a two. Um, and that's how it comes out of the box. I haven't programmed that. So two is a delay zone or delay one. We'll come back to what delay one means in a minute. So it's delay one. So that's a switch on my front door. So when I get home and I open the front door, I'm gonna trigger that read switch and I wanna have a delay, let's say 10 seconds before the alarm rings. So it gives me a chance to disarm the system. So that's why we need a delay there. Let's go to 274, which is the zone type for zone two. And I want that to be a handover zone and it's already set as a handover zone. A handover zone just means that you only get a delay on that zone if you've already triggered an entry delay zone. So in this situation, uh, for this sample system, the front door read switch is, is the delay zone. When I open the door, I trigger the hallway PIR. So provided I've already triggered the front door switch, I'll get a delay on the hall sensor. Okay, let's go down to uh, zone three. So that's at 281, currently set as a handover zone, but I want that to be an instant zone because that's gonna be in the master bedroom. So I just type in the, while it's displayed, I type in the new value, which is a zero for an instant zone, and I'll save it with the stay button. Let's go down to um, zone four, which is 288. We jump to that. That's also comes out of the box as a handover zone. So I'm gonna change that to an instant zone. So we press zero and save it. Let's go to zone five, which is 295. That's currently set as a, uh, let's see, that's an instant zone. So let's change that to delay zone two. So delay zone two just means I can get a longer delay. Delay zone one, I can program that to say 10 seconds because that's all I'll need to get into the front door. Um, but on the driveway sensor, I use that as an early warning. If someone hits the driveway in the middle of the night, my keypad will start beeping, but I don't want it to beep for just 10 seconds. I want that to be say 60 seconds to give me an early warning that someone's coming up the driveway. So that's why I've made that um, delay zone two, which is a type three. So I just enter the three, save it with the stay button. Okay, let's go to zone six. That's stored at 302. And that's currently set to an instant zone. Now this is a smoke detector. So I'm gonna make that a zone type 13, which is a 24 hour fire detector. And I save that. Um, now, zone seven and eight are not going to be used. So any zone that's not used on the system, you give it a zone type of 15. That means it won't display on the code pad and the system will ignore it. So let's go down to zone seven. We'll make that a 15 and save it. And let's go to zone eight, which is 316. I'm gonna make that a 15 
and I'm going to save it. And that's, uh, that's how we program our zone types. It's good just to go through and double check them and I'll just race through this quickly. Zone one's a two, that's what I wanted. Zone two is a one. Anyway, you get the idea, you go through. If I got to um, a zone and I thought, oh, hang on, I didn't want to hand over zone there. I wanted that to actually be an instant zone. Just enter the new value, store it, and you're done. Let's program stay zones. So in stay mode, we can tell the system to ignore some sensors while other sensors are still active. Um, so typically you'd have your sleeping areas off, you tell the system to ignore those zones uh, and the living areas and other areas, garages and things can remain armed. So we go into each zone, so zone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and tell it whether it's going to be armed in stay mode or inactive or isolated in stay mode. So let's go into programming mode. Five, six, seven, eight. We're in um, installer programming mode. So let's go into zone one first. So location 271 is where we tell zone one whether it's going to be active in stay mode or isolated in stay mode or inactive in stay mode. So you can see there that it's a 14. So if there's a 14 there, it means that that zone, zone one in this case, will be armed in stay mode. So if we walked into that zone and the system was in stay mode, we'd get an alarm from the system. If we thought, well, we don't want that zone to be armed in stay mode, we just put a 15 in there. But for this sample system, um, zone one is my front door read switch, so I want that to be armed at night time. So if someone opens the front door while I'm sleeping, I'll get an alarm from the system. Let's go to um, zone two. So it's stay mode um, setting is stored at 278. And you can see that it's um, set at a 14. So it is also armed in stay mode. That's the hallway sensor and that's fine. I'm gonna leave that active in stay mode. Let's uh, go down to 285, which is the setting for zone three. Um, that's also uh, out of the box. They all come out um, by default as armed in stay mode. But because this is the master bedroom sensor, I don't want that to be armed while I'm sleeping. So I just make that a 15. So we type in a 15, save it with the stay button. And now zone three or the master bedroom sensor uh, will be isolated when I put the system into stay mode tonight. Okay, let's go on to zone four. It's stored at 292. It's a 14. That's my living room sensor. So I'm happy to have that um, armed in stay mode. Zone five is stored at 299. Um, do we want to keep that on? Yeah, we definitely want that on at night. So we'll leave that in stay mode. Um, and the other zones there, zone six is a 24 hour zone. It doesn't matter what we set in there because it's uh, already, it doesn't matter what the setting is. It's a 24 hour zone. So that uh, setting won't have any effect. Uh, and zone seven or eight are spare zones. So it doesn't matter what we put in there. So we'll leave those zones. So basically any zone that you want to be armed when you're sleeping, set it to a 14. And any zone that you want to be isolated when you're sleeping, set to a 15. Let's check that our stay uh, mode is working correctly. So we'll hop out of programming mode by pressing nine, six, zero and away. And let's arm the system in stay mode. So we do that by pressing zero and stay. We've armed in stay mode because it says on here and the stay icon is on. And you can see that zone three is flashing while we're in the exit delay mode. So any zone that's flashing while we're in exit delay means that it's been isolated or disconnected from the system. So zone three on our system is the master bedroom sensor. So that's exactly what we want it to happen. We don't want any, any alarms from the master bedroom. So zone three is flashing and isolated and the rest of our zones will continue to work um, and they're armed in the stay mode. Okay, let's uh, look at delays now. So we're gonna program the entry delay, the exit delay, and the siren runtime. So we'll start with the entry delay. That's the amount of time that you've got from the minute you, that you trigger a, a delay zone until the siren rings. So typically for, for this example, it'll be our read switch on the front door. So try and keep that delay as low as possible. If the keypad's just inside the front door or just inside your office door, you know, 10 seconds is probably long enough. If it's down the hallway or you're a bit slow getting in, you might want to make that, you know, 15, perhaps 20, but you don't want to make it too long. You don't want to give the intruder extra time before the siren rings. So try and keep it as low as possible. So to program the delay, there are two programming locations. There's not a single programming location. We've got to actually build up the delay that we want by using uh, two memory locations. So in the case of entry delay, the locations are 466 and 467. So 466 tells me how many individual seconds between one and 15 do I want? 
and then 467 tells me how many blocks of 16 seconds do I want. By combining the number of 16 second blocks with the number of individual seconds between uh, 1 and 15, we can actually build up um, any delay we want between 0 and 240 seconds. Okay, so uh, in 467, let's just do a practical example. So let's say I wanted a 30 second exit delay. I'd start off at, four, four, let me go into programming mode. So, oops, five, six, seven, eight, and away. I'm in programming mode. So, it, remember it's location 466 and 467. I find it easy to start with 466. So how many blocks of 16 seconds do I want? So for a, for a 30 second um, entry delay, I only want one block of 16 seconds. If I put two blocks, that'll give me 32 seconds. I don't want 32 seconds, I only want 30 seconds. So at 4.67, am I there? 4.67, it's currently got a one, which is one block of 16 seconds. So that's been set there by default from Bosch. Now I can go to 4.66, which is the individual seconds to build up the, the difference to get me up to 30 seconds. So in this case, it'll be 14, won't it? 14, and we save that. So in 4.66, we've got 14, in 467 we've got one so that's one block of 16 seconds at 467 plus the top up of 14 seconds at 466 16 or 14 gives us 30 Whew, gosh, does that make sense i'm making that sound harder than what it is i'm going to link um or put a chart in the in the description below that just shows you what values to put in at 466 and 467 uh, based on some common exit uh, sorry entry delay times 10 seconds 15 20 30 40 60. Now the exit delay is programmed exactly the same way except the two memory locations are 470 and 471. So it's exactly the same. 470 gives us the number of individual seconds between 1 and 15 and 471 um, asks how many blocks of 16 seconds do we want. So if we wanted uh, a 60 second exit delay, um, and let me just explain what the exit delay is in case you don't know. It's the amount of time that the system gives you to leave the premises after you've armed the system. So in other words, you arm the system, the exit delay starts. At the end of the exit delay, the system is armed and ready to detect intruders. So let's go into 471. So that's how many 16 second blocks do I want in my exit delay? Um, in this example, as I said, I'll make this 60 seconds. So I want three blocks of 16. So I enter three and save it. So three 16s are 10, 20, 30, 60, 12, 18, 48. Is that right? 48 seconds. Yep, 48 seconds. Okay, and then I go back to 471. And if I put a 12 in there, the 48 plus 12 gives me 16 seconds. So the 470, at location 470, I put in my individual seconds. At 471, I enter the number of 16 second blocks that I want. Okay, again, there'll be an example in the description below. Um, while we're here, we'll also have a look at the siren runtime. So the siren runtime is the amount of time that the siren rings for when the alarm's been triggered. This one's nice and easy. It's a single memory location and it's 479. So if I go to location 479, we jump to 479. The siren runtime is set at five minutes by default. I like to make it two minutes, but you can make it anything you like between uh, zero and 15 minutes. To make it a two, I just press two save it with the stay button and there's our two minutes. Uh, the other setting I like to change here is the siren sound rate, which is located at location 480. So I'll jump to 480. This is how, how fast the siren sounds, the, 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 quick, the, the speed of the siren. So zero is a really slow, you know, ooh, 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 siren. Uh, if we turn that up to 15, which is where I like to put it, it's this nice, um, quick siren that gives that sort of sense of urgency. Um, so let's make it 15. Again, play around with that. You can set that for anything you like. Right, we're just about there. A uh, couple of things to do before we finish. Um, when you're done with all your programming, exit program mode by pressing the command 960 and away to hop out of program mode. You'll probably have the warning indicator on. Um, you can check the fault analysis mode in the manual, but it'll be the time and date more than likely. And possibly the sirens have disconnected if you disconnected the sirens. So to change the time and date, you enter your master installer code, followed by six, 
followed by a way, and then we just enter the two digits of the day. So today is the seventh, so the seventh day, so zero seven, all these have to be two digit entries, followed by the month, it's January here, so it's zero one for January, followed by the last two digits of the year, zero one in this case, followed by the time in 24 hour format. So it's 2.35 here, so that's in the afternoon, so 14.35 for 2.35 p.m. and then we press away. You can see now that uh, because the time and date is set, the uh, error indicator has disappeared. All right, now let's just change our master user code. So it's currently 2580, which is the default. So I've armed 2580, I've disarmed. Let's change that code now um, to 2468. So to do that, you enter your code 2580, followed by one, followed by away. Now we press one user one which is the master user followed by away then we enter our new code and i said what did i say two four six eight so we just go two four six eight and press the away button to exit program mode so if we arm the system now if we try and arm with the old code two five eight zero nothing happens because we've deleted that and our new code will be two four six eight away systems armed to disarm i enter that code again and stay to disarm. All right, how did you go? If you've been following along with the video, you should now have your Bosch system defaulted and reprogrammed. Um, there's links in the description beneath the video uh, for the installation manuals uh, and the user manuals. Um, there's still a bit more to show you, so the next few videos will cover uh, setting up the system for wireless um, sensors, uh, remote controls, setting up uh, the system to receive mobile phone alerts, setting up the Bosch app, and a few other handy bits and pieces. So um, thanks for watching, and uh, I hope you learned something.